Oh, you you saw yeah. the message? Yes, ma'am. She denied that in my face, and I, I'm, I'm looking at the message in the phone. The message said, leave the back door oh, open. be naked when I arrive. Be naked when I arrive. I'm not gonna lose her, and I'm not gonna lose him, but then my mom comes in, and, it, and it's killing her because we all grew up together. This is insane for them to even be together like this. Ms. Cole, without being too graphic, are there any other details, specifics that you can um, share that would prove your case? I can tell you how big his winker is. It's pretty small. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith brought his estranged wife to court today to prove that he is indeed the biological father of her four-year-old daughter, Christina. He says he signed the birth certificate and has been her daddy since she was born. He knows that he is her father, and he is just here in court to prove it. Mrs. Kalita Smith says she might have allowed Mr. Smith to sign the birth certificate, but she knows that he is not actually the father of Christina. And, you know, I saw text messages, some photos between uh, my wife and, and some other cat. What did you see? What was the exchange? Well, it was, it was like, it was like you know, I, I miss you. You know, when you miss a person, you know, apparently you've seen, you've seen them before. You know, nude photos. And nude photos of your wife or of the man? I say Excuse little, me, Your Honor. I've never more. seen any of these alleged text messages that he's talking about. And that is all we needed to know. It appears Mrs. Smith was cheating on our good man, Mr. Smith. Immediately he learned of this. He let his parents know and then left the house. I found out I was pregnant. We were very excited. I told Christian we weren't together. And I thought that this could be a chance for us to reconnect and make our marriage work. And he agreed. And shortly after, we, we got back together. And so you found out you were pregnant. You told Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, when you found out she was pregnant, were you happy about it? I, extremely happy. You were <laughs> extremely happy. Extremely happy. Well, Mr. Smith sounds like he was in love with Mrs. Smith. And in normal circumstances, that is enough to stop you from ending up in paternity court. But sometimes even love is not enough. He was so happy that he made sure he was there for the baby's birth, even though it was done through a cesarean section. He also signed the birth certificate and gave the baby his last name. I know everything that goes on in my house, so it's it's just a CD that I see that's out of place. I'm like, I didn't put this in here. So th the number that was on the CD, you know how people can pass out CDs? Yes, their you contact know. information. Right, that number, it's just something about that number. I ain't forget about that number. And then I saw an Instagram name. So I immediately go, I look up their Instagram. So I'm, I'm scrolling and I see some somebody <laughs> holding my daughter. Wow, so Mrs. Smith did not stop her cheating ways. Mr. Smith says that the caption on the photo was of the man claiming Christina as his. That is insane. So who is this man? Well, Your Honor, his name is Joseph. I actually met Joseph after we separated and around the time I was very vulnerable <clears throat> and he was the only one showing me any type of attention or any love, which I needed because I felt lonely around the time because my husband left me alone so you had sex with him yes ma'am if your husband leaves you because you cheated on him the best thing to do is probably not to jump into another person's bed without protection when you know you are not divorced yet now mrs smith did not only do that but she also told her husband that the baby she had by her side man was his when she knew that it could belong to her side piece that is psychotic and of course mr joseph is also in court today to say his piece we met in a, uh, in a public place and i saw her walking and she was in the stroller and she just looked up at me with like the, a mischievous like like one of those things and I was like yo you know me from somewhere like that's when I felt like it might have been my daughter you did yeah it was something there like she knew me already and so when you met her did Miss Smith say to you this is your child when I seen her I, she looks like just like my dad and Mr. Smith can do nothing but watch as another man calls his daughter his own he says he knew that Christina was his child but he could not take responsibility for her because he was not in the right place to care for a kid he would see her spend time with her and then send her back home to be provided for by Mr. Smith. And Mrs. Smith never let her husband know about this arrangement until he found out for himself. And you'd always refer to yourself as daddy? Yes, ma'am. And all this time, Mr. Smith, you're also spending time with her? Of course. And and having absolutely no idea this entire encounter occurred, still referring oh. to yourself as daddy as well. Miss Smith, what kind of web you weaving? Yeah. I, I'm gonna I, give you time to think <laughs> on it. Now it's time to get to the bottom of this extraordinary story. Who's the father? Mr. Joseph or Mr. Smith? Let's see what the DNA test results have to say. Pertaining to whether Mr. Smith or Mr. Prater, the biological father is Mr. Prater. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I know that was not the news you wanted. That's tough. Oh, 
Oh, I know. But it doesn't matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I gotta do. It's my it's my baby. Mr. Andrews says that Miss Corbett forged his signature on the birth certificate of her one-year-old son and that he's not the biological father of the child. Miss Corbett insists that this is a lie and that Mr. Andrews is denying the child because he doesn't want to be responsible and because he has an overbearing mother. Let's hear about this forging business. Uh, Mr. Andrews, why do you believe your signature was forged on Quinn Jr.'s birth certificate? I don't know, Your Honor. I didn't sign anything and somehow my name still managed to get put on the, the birth certificate. I have a copy of it right here. Let me see that birth certificate. So you say somehow your name just appeared on the birth certificate? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Quinn Andrew Sr., name of father, right underneath. Take me back to that day. You believe somebody put your name on there? Yes, Your Honor. Now, who could that person be? What a mystery. Anyway, let's ask Ms. Corbett how Mr. Andrews' name even got on that birth certificate in the first place. Ms. Corbett, did you put his name on there? No, it's no way possible for me to put, just put his name on a birth certificate. The only reason why he's saying that he did not sign a birth certificate is because his mother told him not to sign my child's birth certificate. I mean, anybody that has kids, and she should know because she has enough, knows that in order for and, the birth, and, the name to be on the birth certificate. And all eight of them is well taken care of, baby. Told my son not to sign a birth certificate until he get the blood test approved. Well, this should be easy to clear up. There should be a witness who was there when Mr. Andrews signed this birth certificate, right? Did you witness him sign it? I was there. So you were there. You not saw him sign it. it. Not just me. The lady who signed off on under, underneath the, the birth certificate. Yeah, she saw him too. So what you're saying is he didn't do what his mother told him to do, so now he's saying he didn't sign it. Exactly. Excuse me, Yana. If he signed the birth certificate, his name would actually be signed on that form. So you're saying there is no cursive signature? No, at all. It's only his name. Name. Oh, that's a good point. Anyway, it doesn't matter, as we will be getting the DNA test later. Now, Ms. Corbett says her relationship with Mr. Andrews was never a committed one, and that's because his mother was always meddling in their affairs. But his mama has a different idea. I wouldn't even call it a relationship, Your Honor, because she slept with the whole damn city, the whole neighborhood. Okay, she would let, let's, let's, use, there, baby. let's use respectful language in the courtroom. You said you believe she was sleeping with... She slept around with everybody in our neighborhood. If that was true, I would have with her husband because he wanted me to. Oh, uh, Lord. That's a lie. We better stay on track because this is getting feisty. Anyway, Miss Corbett says that Miss Smith doesn't know anything about her, so she cannot possibly be a judge on whether she slept around or not. What does Mr. Andrews have to say about all the claims being made? She was possessive. She was verbally abusive. He says I was possessive and verbally abusive. This is the same one that is a cut that walks <laughs> to the candy lady right through our house. It's two minutes away. Every time I'm walking through, he has to stand to the door and watch me like I'm a two-year-old. Negative. You're your Honor. He doesn't. He Your didn't Honor. want me to speak to anybody. I was not allowed to talk to anybody. I was not allowed to even befriend females because he said that was going to be using the excuse. Your Honor, that's a lie. Ah, well, we are going to see who the compulsive liar is today because someone certainly is. But the question is this. Why does Mr. Andrew even doubt this child? Your Honor, I doubt for the simple fact that while we was together, I happened to clean up the house one day where we stayed at. I found the empty magnum wrapper under the sofa, which she claimed was mine, which it wasn't because all of my we used, I throw it away. It was his. Tell him about that day that you came home from work and she had another man running out the back yeah, door. Yeah, like a... Yes. One of my third together. cousins told me that. His mother stayed right across the street from where we stayed at, like... And I is this the diagram you That's submitted to the court? Come up here, please. Those are heavy claims, and Mr. Andrews has a diagram to prove those claims. What does this diagram show? This right here is a, a two-story apartment building. This right here, like, is the driveway. Like, two feet from the driveway is, like, the front entrance. It's, it's the same in the back. And right here is a slab and, like, an empty field. There's no gate around this side of the house, but on this side of the building, it's a gate. And it's obvious my cousin and mama stay right across the street. And she could, you could sit right here and, like, literally watch all this. And if somebody murdered him over here, it'd be real obvious. So, obviously, the guy she had in there, she even had a bike in, in, in inside the house. That's certainly illustrative. But there's no evidence that all of this happened, especially as it's hearsay. Ms. Corbett denies this entirely and says that never happened. She also says that they got back together after that incident, and it was never an issue until it came to denying the paternity of the child. Of course, Mr. Andrews says that's not true because, and you guessed it, Ms. Corbett is a compulsive liar. Ms. Corbett, did that happen? No, and I told him that. He asked me about that. I explained to him that that was not true. We was together after that. Man, this was never an issue till just now. Man, she's a compulsive liar. I don't. I well, I'll tell you one man, thing look. I'm not lying about, and that's him being the father of my child, and that's all. Once we figure that out, that's their game. None of this.
this is irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you, sir. But Mr. Andrews isn't done. He says he even has more doubts, and he's got messages on his phone to prove it. What else? I found messages in her phone where guys was telling, some guy obviously was telling her, leave the bag door open and be naked when I arrive. Oh, you, you yeah. saw the message? Yes, ma'am. She denied that in my face, and I, I'm, I'm looking at the message in the phone. That's one reason. The second reason, I found the magnum wrapper. The message said, leave the bag door oh, oh, open. be naked when I arrive. Be naked when I arrive. What? Three or four guys? What does Ms. Corbett have to say about this? So you've outlined four pieces of doubt as to whether or not Quinn is your biological child. Ms. Corbett, so you are saying that these allegations are not true. They are you not did true. Not the only the reason why he is saying that is because he is standing on side of her. And the other time, whenever I talk liar. to Quinn, I don't hear none of this. Me and Quinn, me and Stop Quinn. Lying. Ms. Corbett says none of that ever happened, and she says she asked the guy who told Mr. Andrews about the incident of a guy running out of her house, and he said he never told him that. But then that guy told Ms. Corbett that Mr. Andrews had slept with his girlfriend, which is just way too much drama. Anyway, Ms. Corbett insists that Mr. Andrews has always complained to her about his mother. Your Honor, she's telling a lie. She's the she problem. She is the problem. I don't even interfere problem. in my son's life, y'all. At all. I let him Yes, he all. does. Quinn has told me she that don't. she has told she him don't. that if he come Stop back lying. and talk to me and stuff like that, Stop that she lying. was gonna cut him off. So you yes, believe, you believe his mother is standing in between the relationship he could potentially have with Quinn Jr. She does not want Quinn to have his own children because that would mean that he would have to stop taking care of her. There's so much anger and resentment here. And where there's that, there's also intimate energy. So Judge Lauren asked the million dollar question. Are you all still sleeping together now? No, man. No. She stayed trying to seduce me though. I got messages right now on my phone <laughs> where she's trying to seduce me like every week. So how many times have you seen Quinn Jr.? Like over oh, a dozen times. So you spent quality time That's with my... him. He does not. Your Honor. Your Honor. Been, I have to beg him a, for the come get my child. Been like seven he was, times. He was there six days. It's time to get to the bottom of this. Who's the father, Mr. Andrews, or some other man? Let's see what the DNA has to say. Mr. Andrews, you are the father. Let it be known. I'm done with the drama and the nonsense. Right. I've heard too much testimony today that makes me sincerely nervous. This child's five months old. If you had doubt before, that's done now. This is your child. Your child. So, you both have a hand and a responsibility to raise this child accordingly, but you gotta figure out how to do it. Mr. Webb and his girlfriend insist that there's absolutely zero chance that he fathered the defendant's 16-month-old child, Majestic. And that's because he never actually slept with the defendant. The defendant, Ms. Cole, says that's impossible, and she's 100% certain that Mr. Webb is indeed the father. She says the only reason he's denying paternity is because he doesn't want to ruin his relationship with his girlfriend. I never had sex with her, Your Honor. I never well, that would rule you out. You never had sex with her? No. Yeah, he did. She's a liar. <laughs> She's crazy. Miss Cole, we've heard a lot of defenses in this courtroom. Rarely have we ever heard that you've never had sex with her. She's absolutely crazy. So you think she's just making this up? Yeah. No, I'm not. Yes. If you've never had sex, why, why are you here? I know for a fact. Well, it looks like Ms. Cole is crystal clear about who had sex with whom. Mr. Webb says that he was only ever friends with Ms. Cole, and they were never intimate. He even says he never stayed in her bedroom, but Ms. Cole thinks another thing entirely happened. I can't exactly remember, but I know that it was a night that we was partying. Oh, yeah, right. He ain't Your, like that. Your Your Honor, the worst that we've ever done is take a picture, and she was already in the bathroom. She had called me in there. When I walked in the bathroom, she said cheese and took a picture before I could even say anything. I didn't even want to take that picture. That's how crazy she is. She posted There's it on, more she than posted, one. Up. She There's posted more than it on one. Facebook, and when I told her to take it down, she refused to because she's crazy. Wow, it seems Ms. Cole's mother has some really strong feelings about this case. Mr. Webb denies all of this and gets Mrs. Cole screaming again. You you're are a liar. liar. You are a liar. You're Everything you're that you're saying. Liar. She was on the phone with me five, six times you're a, a liar. day. Why, why was Mr. Webb living with you? He's a punk bomb. We, Honor, we supplied would... everything for them. Their food, everything, everything. And Why were you living her? there? I wasn't living there. We were hanging out for a week, a week and a half. Right. And on top of that, April 18th, I had moved back to Detroit. How was I there for two, two, three months? But somehow, Mr. Webb's stories do not seem to add up. It doesn't sound like he was just hanging out. It sounds like he needed somewhere to stay. Anyway, Mr. Webb's girlfriend and Ms. Cole also get into it. I don't do that type of stuff. I've known him for seven years and he is not like that at all. And you yeah, all of course. And insane. you called me with his friend telling me that he was there for three weeks and you guys were having sex and blah, blah, blah. At first, I did believe that. But then I heard you his story and none of Shut up, phone. I am talking. Hold on, let's be respect. So anyway, she was telling me that they were sleeping together and stuff. He wasn't even there for three weeks. He was there for a week, maybe a week and a half. Just over there. 
Yeah, it still doesn't add up. Mr. Webb still says he went over to Ms. Cole's house, hung out for about a week and a half, threw a party, and then dipped after without ever sleeping with her. Ms. Cole says that wasn't how it happened, and that one night they did the deed. She had sent me an ultrasound saying, that's a 3D photo, tell me she don't look like you. Are you that crazy? How crazy are you that I look, do I look like an ultrasound? I ain't never, I got on Google because I, I don't know like much about baby yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I'm thinking, is that a, a, is that a thing now? So I said, Tasha, you're crazy. We didn't blink, I'm not the father to your baby, please leave me alone. And that was then, I just didn't want to deal with her anymore. I still don't. However, Ms. Cole says that Mr. Webb told her cousin that he was the father of the baby. But Mr. Webb denies that and says that he thinks Ms. Cole is just obsessed with him and wants him to be the father. Ms. Cole says the only reason she's in paternity court is to know whether Mr. Webb is the father of her child or whether the child belongs to her former partner. No, I told you there was another possibility and I told the other possibility there was another. But you also told that you were 100% sure that I was the father. You and your mom said that. Wait a minute, Ms. Cole? Look, she looks just like him. That baby's white. He is dark. I'm sorry, but I'm Puerto Rican. Okay. I, I, that's all I gotta Ms. say. Ms. Cole, Ms. Cole. What? You're saying that you were honest and don't say what. I'm sorry. Yes, you're on. <laughs> oh, let me take a breath. Mr. Webb doesn't believe this happened at all, but Ms. Cole has a pretty convincing reason why she's now sure that Mr. Webb is the father. I was for certain that the other guy was the dad uh. until my, ba <laughs> my due date got changed a month ahead, which would make him the dad. It went from February 22nd to January 28th. You submitted a calendar to the court, am I correct? Oh, you have another copy, Jerome? Let me see that, please. Mr. Webb still denies it, even though Ms. Cole remembers how the entire experience was. She has literally made herself believe. She made herself believe these lies that she's telling. But Mr. Webb says he never slept with you. And he did. But he did. For sure, yeah. It was a lousy, like, 20 minutes. I'm so sorry, Your Honor. Okay, there was two witnesses there that said that, there, that they never had sex at the party. Well, at least it wasn't a lousy five minutes. That would have been far worse. What if Mr. Webb had gotten drunk and slept with Ms. Cole and just didn't remember? That could have happened during the nights of partying that they had, right? But Mr. Webb says that's not possible. Possible. Ms. Cole, without being too graphic, are there any other details, specifics that you can um, share that would prove your case? I can tell you how big his winker is. It's pretty small. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. I could tell you plenty of times. It's about I've that known big. him for seven years. It's no, about that big. Definitely not. Definitely not. And don't you dare! Wow, that's a lot. Well, it's time to see what the DNA test has to tell us about this case. Who's the liar here, Mr. Webb or Ms. Cole? Mr. Webb, you are not her father. <laughs> Oh. But I want a lie detector. Listen, we don't clown in this courtroom. I know you probably feel relieved, vindicated, but at the same time, there's a beautiful young baby whose life and paternity is still at issue. Miss Cole, you stood firm in your testimony that you were intimate with Mr. Webb. Yes. And this other guy. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Walters says that the defendant is her three-year-old son's father, and she wants him to step up. Mr. Rogers, the defendant, says this is false, and that he has spent two months in jail for missing child support payments for a child that he insists doesn't belong to him. He is here with his mother to prove that he isn't the father. I slept with another man weeks prior to even conceiving my son, and we did use protection, and at the time, I could see my son. He was the only person that I was having sex with without using protection. I've known them for 20 years now. We grew up together. We did family vacations together, holidays. We were always, our families were always together. We grew up, we dated. That didn't really work out in middle school. The feelings came back once we got in high school and we started sleeping together again. So they were having unprotected intercourse in secret. When Mr. Rogers got news that Ms. Walters was pregnant, he told her congratulations and immediately asked her to congratulate the father. He says never for once believed that he was the father of her baby. Because she was in a relationship with this other guy, so why would it automatically be mine? You know what I'm saying? But were you sleeping with her during the window of conception? Yes, ma'am. We had slept together. I was not in a relationship, Your Honor, with anybody. She says she's pregnant. You say good luck to you. And now you by yourself. It was hard. He didn't come to any doctor's appointments. I was doing it by myself. And then once I got maybe seven, eight months, oh, I'll be there if he's mine. I'll take care of him. Don't put me on child support. Once I had him, he came to the hospital. He left the hospital before my son was born. Mr. Rogers' mom says that their families were really close. But the pregnancy has ruined all of that because Mr. Rogers insists that he's not the father. Uh, we was best friends growing up, literally best friends. She was friends. like one of my children, Your Honor. Well, ever I mean, since this happened, it's just completely killed it's everything. Our families don't hang out no more. That and so, Miss Sanders, I can see this is really upsetting. I apologize for that. No, you don't have to apologize. You're upset because first you had no idea. No, I would have never allowed them to 
spend days and nights and all in my house because to me they were like brother and sister. Oh, you can see how all of this would completely ruin the family dynamics. Let's see how that looks from the perspective of Mrs. Rogers. Did you know if Miss Walters was intimate with anyone else? Yes, yeah, later on I did because I found a bunch of condoms in her stuff when I went through it because I checked and your all Honor, the kids with, that was for from drugs. the health department. They give you condoms at the health department and that was right after I had went to the health department, I went to her house. But the bottom line is when you found them, you said to yourself, she must be sexual actually active mm -hmm. now. Yes, yeah, sure. But you weren't aware of that before. I had heard that... Despite hearing the rumors, Mrs. Rogers says that and doesn't think that her son could be the father. She says immediately she was informed that there was a chance. She asked her son, and he told her that he wasn't the father, so she took him at his word. All right, I was not in the delivery room when he was born, so therefore my name is not on that birth certificate. I've had no DNA, but DNA established the whole time he has been in this world. How am I on child support? I was out of town working when the court date was set up for the DNA test. So I missed the court date. Automatically rules me as the father. Yes. I'm thinking, how am I on child support? There's been no DNA, no birth certificate signed. There's no connection to me and that boy. Well, that's how default judgment works. If you don't show up, you immediately become the father. And since Mr. Rogers didn't pay child support, he was arrested and locked up for two months. I end up going to this little country jail where, I don't know, it's like a little, it's not even a jail, it's a little barn thing. And they locked me up there for three days. They don't feed you on the weekends, but like two times a day. And it's these little bitty, I don't even know what it was, to be honest with you, Your Honor. Then I had to wait till Monday for Monroe County to drive down there and pick me up and transform me back to Monroe County where I sat two months. That's what happens when you don't pay child support, Mr. Rogers. Next, we have Ms. Walter's best friend, Ms. Rochelle Rogers, who's also Mr. Rogers' sister, in court to give her testimony. Do you believe your brother is Ryland's father? No, ma'am. Why? Well, because at the time we were all young, we all done our different things, we were all partying. We were together every day, all the time. Every time we went out, we went out together. We done everything together. I, I was aware of her sleeping with the other guy. She also stated the next morning that she did sleep with him. Ms. Rogers says that the other person is more likely to be the father of the baby and not her brother. Her reason is that Ms. Walters didn't know who the father could be when she got the pregnancy test, but now is claiming that Mr. Rogers is certainly the father. When she realized she was pregnant. Yes. And in that moment, yes. she admitted to you that there were two possible fathers. Yes, which I knew before because of the party. And she did tell me that she slept with the guy the morning after she slept with him. And that was, you know, weeks prior to this happening, of course, weeks prior to her, her finding out she was pregnant. Well, that's a lot to take in. But the DNA test is here now, and it's time to get to the bottom of this. Who's the father, Mr. Rogers, or some other man? Mr. Rogers, you are his father. I'm sorry. <laughs> Both of you all burst into tears in that moment. What do you feel? Your Honor, I grew up without a father, so I know what it's like. And I told myself from day one I was not going to be that person. And now that I know him as father, I can step up and actually be his father. Good. How do you feel, Ms. Walters? Are you happy? My son deserves to have his father there. In this episode, we meet Ms. Short, a single teenage mother who is demanding that her first love, Mr. Johnson, step up and be a father to their 21-month-old son, Jabari. But there's a twist. Mr. Johnson denies being the father and claims there's another guy in the picture. Ms. Short, you and your mother opened your case today because your first love, the defendant, denies he fathered your 21-month-old son, Jabari. You are a single teenage mother who needs help and you demand Mr. Johnson step up and be a father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So how did these two lovebirds meet? Well, it all started on Facebook. Ms. Short and Mr. Johnson connected online and almost immediately, sparks were flying. But things took a sharp turn when Mr. Johnson started showing interest in another Girl. Mr. Johnson, you are in court with your mother and say you might have been the plaintiff's first love, but you weren't the only one. You refuse to do anything for her son until the DNA results prove you are his biological father. Is that correct? Yes, you are. Fast forward a bit and Ms. Short finds out she's pregnant, but here's where it gets dicey. She had been intimate with not only Mr. Johnson, but also another guy. Could this other guy be the father or is Mr. Johnson the lucky winner? That's what we're here to find out. You know, we can't make him. But we need to know, because I did. I did stop him from coming over because I didn't want no feelings to get involved. Like, them to get attached if he wasn't the father, because she did tell them it's a possibility you may not be the father. Jabari is almost two years old. Now, here's where things start to heat up. Ms. Short reaches out to Mr. Johnson's mom to inform her about the pregnancy and the possibility that her son could be the father. And guess what? Mr. Johnson's mom actually shows up at the baby shower. Talk about drama. But wait, there's more. So, did you confirm? that other guy? I sure did. Did I... you say, I'm pregnant and you're the father? I said possibility. She really believe in her heart is Mr. Johnson. All right. I'm and hoping she... it's not. Mr. Johnson, at what point did you realize Miss Short was even pregnant? See, Your Honor, I was away 
I found out she was pregnant six months into her pregnancy. Miss Short's mom, Sylvia, is not happy about the situation. She even admits to not being in the hospital room when her daughter gave birth. Tensions are running high. But hey, let's not forget about the baby in all of this. Little Jabari needs a father figure. Somebody knew about the other guy, and he really does exist, and so they just told him truthfully what he needed to know, which was before you go and start stepping up and taking care of this baby, there is a possibility that another man could be the biological father as well. Finally, we get to the moment we've all been waiting for. The DNA results are in, and it's time for Judge Lake to reveal who the real father is. Emotions are running wild, and everyone is on the edge of their seats. It's time to get to the truth. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. I'll be that for him. Good. I'm glad you will. This is all I just want, this is all I want to know to get all the other extra stuff out of the way. You they have to. They shouldn't have took this. It's, but no, no, Miss Short, it, 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 this happens in life. Yes. It should not have taken this. Miss Johnson is a strong and determined mother who has big dreams for her teenage son. She's concerned that if her son turns out to be the father, those dreams may be shattered forever. But there's more. It all started when she received a shocking Facebook message that changed everything. Miss Johnson, you have brought your teenage son to court to get the results of a paternity test to prove that he is not the father of the defendant's son, Hayden. You say you've always had big plans for your son's future and you're concerned that if this child is his, those dreams may now never come true. Ms. Longshore, the defendant, messaged Ms. Johnson, apologizing for sleeping with her son while she was at work. And get this, she initially thought someone else was the father, but now she's pointing fingers at Ms. Johnson's son. I had a message from Ms. Longshore and she was very apologetic in the letter and understood that I would be angry. Um, and she had informed me that they had sexual relations at my home when I was at work. And then she also obviously indicated that she thought your son was the father. Initially, she thought somebody else was. Okay. Ms. Johnson and Ms. Longshore went to the same high school, and at first, they were just friends. But one thing led to another, and they ended up having a steamy encounter. And in case you hadn't figured it out by now, that steamy encounter is exactly what got them into the courtroom. And at first, she was telling me, like, oh, I'm pregnant, but I don't think you're the father. I had sex with other guys. It's, it shouldn't even be you. And then afterwards, after the baby was born, she was like, oh, don't worry, it don't look like you, you're not the father. So I, I wasn't even I worried. never said that. I told you plenty of times Kaden looks just like you. Why are you lying in court? No, you, you never stop. said that. Tensions are rising in the courtroom. Ms. Johnson and Ms. Longshore are going at it, throwing accusations left and right. Ms. Johnson is adamant that her son is not the father, while Ms. Longshore is standing her ground, claiming that he is. It's a battle of words, and things are heating up. And I told him before, if this is your baby, whatever I gotta do, I'll do it. Because I don't, I want him to finish college. I want him to go. I want him to achieve his dreams. I never got to achieve mine, okay? And I want that for him. And I was this young lady's age when I had my first kid. So it's not that I don't understand the struggle. Ms. Johnson opens up about her own struggles, being homeless and raising her siblings. She knows firsthand the hardships of life and wants a better future for her son. She's been through it all, and now she's fighting for her son's dreams. Other guy tested. After the baby was born, she was like, oh, you're not the father. It was like just a baby. Now, Miss Johnson, one of your concerns, and I see the passion as you speak directly to me, is you want to break a cycle. Yes, ma'am. Now let's hear from Mr. Lee, the young man at the center of this storm. He's a football player with big dreams, and he claims he was focused on his career, not relationship. But Ms. Longshore insists that he liked her, and she even tagged him in a sonogram on Facebook. So I moved to Philadelphia, where my mom and my aunt was, and I met my oldest son's father, and I got pregnant. But I feel like my child saved my life because I didn't really care about my life until I got pregnant with my first son. And I realized, you know, that God gave me this ability to have a baby. That's so powerful. Ms. Johnson gives Mr. Lee a reality check, reminding him that he's not a victim, but a survivor. She shares her own experiences of being a young mother and how she fought to provide for her children. She wants him to step up and take responsibility, not just for the child, but for his own future. With her mother as an addict, like she raised her siblings, she raised all her brothers, and I was raised up with them. So you know your mother's a very strong woman. Yes, I do, Your Honor. I and know she'll, she'll do whatever it takes to, just to get us fed. And you also know how much she wanted something different for you. I had the football career planned out. I had the junior college that I was going to go to. And if this child comes, I, I won't be able to do that. It's all right, folks, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. The paternity test results are in, and the tension in the courtroom is palpable. Will Mr. Lee be revealed as the father, or will it be another shocking twist? Brace yourselves, because this is going to be a game changer. Mr. Lee, it is without question, you are 
cadence. Woo! I told you! Told you! I got nothing left to say. Told you! Nothing left to say. Nothing left to say. Kiss my... All right, folks, in one corner, we have Ms. Owens, a strong-willed woman who claims that her ex-husband, Mr. Reigns, is the father of her daughter, Jamie. But hold on to your hats, because in the other corner, Mr. Reigns is denying everything. It's a classic he said, she said situation, and we're about to hear both sides of the story. Ms. Owens, you say that after a whirlwind teenage romance and a brief marriage to Mr. Reigns, he got you pregnant and then left you high and dry to raise your daughter, Jamie, on your own. You say the defendant is fully aware he is your daughter's father, and you intend to prove this today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. According to Ms. Owens, their relationship was a whirlwind teenage romance that ended in a brief marriage, but things took a turn when Mr. Reigns allegedly cheated on her. Ms. Owens was left high and dry, pregnant with their daughter, Jaime, and she is not holding back, folks. She's calling him a lying, cheating piece of trash. Mr. Reigns, you say there is no way you fathered Ms. Owens, child, as you were separated and living in another county when she conceived. You say Ms. Owens has named you as the father in order to save face in front of her daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. But wait, there's more. Mr. Reigns has his own side of the story. He claims that they were off and on, off and on, like a broken record. He even admits to maybe, just maybe, cheating on her. But here's the kicker, folks. He says he wasn't even with Ms. Owens when she got pregnant. Plot twist. Young back in those days, we were off and on. We were young, off and on, off and on. She she got pregnant initially, we, and I married her because I was trying to do the right thing. She wanted to have a miscarriage. Again, after that, off and on, off and on, off and on. I got uh, tired of it. It got old. And so um, she always wanted to go back home, so I let her go back home. About three to four months, I get a letter from her. Now let's talk about the timeline. Ms. Owens insists that she got pregnant in October, right after Mr. Reigns dropped her off at her parents' place. But Mr. Reigns insists that he was long gone by then. He even brought a calendar to court to prove his point. Who's telling the truth? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is when Clara says she's pregnant. No. Now, I got pregnant in October. This is when she says six, eight. So I left in August is when I left. Okay. I was no longer, we broke up. I was no longer with her in August. Is your birthday July 31st, Ms. Rowe? Yes, Your Honor. Things really start to heat up when Ms. Owens reveals a letter she received from Mr. Raines when she was seven months pregnant. Brace yourselves, folks. The letter basically said, you're not pregnant. It's all in your head. And if you are pregnant, it's not mine. Talk about a low blow. Ms. Owens, you say you know for a fact he was not gone then. Exactly. How do you know that for a fact? Because that's when I got pregnant. I got a letter from him, Your Honor, when I was seven months pregnant, out to here, and he said, you are not pregnant, it's all in your head. But here's where it gets even crazier. Ms. Owens didn't put Mr. Raines' name on the birth certificate. Instead, she gave Jaime her own last name. And she even told Mr. Raines' family that they had been separated for over 10 months. She did not have that. Well, let's back She up. had yeah. my father to help me raise her. It's not fair. Mm. He has never, ever done anything for her. Wow, wow. And so when you gave birth, did you ask him to be there? Did you say, I'm having the baby, do you wanna come to the hospital or you should come, you're welcome? No, no, no. no. Fast forward to Jaime's childhood. She grows up not knowing who her father is and the whispers start. People tell her she doesn't look like her supposed dad and doubts start to creep in. But then at the age of 12, Ms. Owens drops a bombshell on Jaime. She tells her that someone else could be her biological father. And I have never loved anybody like that again. She tells Jamie that I'm not her dad. She told me that she was with someone else, that they were broke up. So you did tell her that someone else could be her biological I father? I said there's a possibility. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Mr. Raines has spent years trying to establish paternity, even though he claims he's not the father. Wait, what? Why would he put in all that time, money, and energy? If he didn't think there was a chance, we need to get to the bottom of this. Court today asserting that you are not That's right. Ms. Rose's biological father. That's her fault. And yet father. throughout her life, but no, but throughout her life, you've spent time, money, and energy trying to establish paternity. I did. All right, folks, the moment of truth is upon us. The DNA results are about to be revealed, and the tension in the courtroom is at an all-time high. Jamie, Ms. Owens, and Mr. Raines are all on the edge of their seats. Will Mr. Raines be proven to be Jamie's biological father, or is there another twist waiting to be uncovered? Let's find out. Mr. Raines, you are the father. <laughs> 
You are her father. I'm glad. I tried to be a father to her, Your Honor. I have. I took responsibility when she's young. I fought with Claire. You know, I, um, my only grits is not I didn't fight more for her. Can I hug her? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Meet Brian and Marcus Wiggins, identical twins who find themselves in quite the pickle. You see, both of them claim to have had relations with the defendant, Cecily Williams. And now they're here to find out which one of them is the father of Cecily's three-year-old son, Zaylin Davis. Cecily on two different occasions. You all think that you're the only two possibilities, or could there be more? She had a boyfriend at the time. How many times have I been asking you for a DNA test? Seems like to me, maybe you weren't so sure. I'm ready for the results. I was always second. Now you got an attitude because you feel second. You signed on for second. So, Brian and Marcus both claim to have slept with Cecily on the same night. Yes, you heard that right. They were hanging out in a hotel room with some friends, having a good time, when things took a turn. With only one of the twins. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you claim you are confident he's your son's father, and you're asking him to step up when you prove it here today. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, the court has ordered a full investigation, including a polygraph test, to determine the extent of this alleged sexual relationship. Brian. The first twin to take the stand tells the court that he was pretty faded that night. He even passed out on the couch while the party was still going on. But when he woke up the next morning, he got the shock of his life. You know, he'd been drinking all night, so I'm kind of slumped over. You know, I'm, I'm passing out at this point. I'm on the Sounding couch like passing Sounding like a out. recipe for a disaster <laughs> or a paternity case. Come the next morning, you know, I said we say our goodbyes or whatever. And me and my brother, we still got a little bit of time left on the room. So we hanging out. Marcus, on the other hand, admits to having relations with Cecily not just once, but twice. Talk about a wild night. And when Brian confronted Cecily about it, she denied everything. But wait, there's more? Well, Your Honor, when the night kind of winded down and everybody started passing out, kind of, uh, you know, Cecily was still turned up. So, you know, I, I seen in my eyes, like, okay, she must be the pop off of the group. So, um, one thing led to another. We ended up in the bathroom and I smashed, took her down. Wasn't why do that you hard. Keep on, why do you keep on lying? Cecily drops a bombshell in court, claiming that she was actually in a relationship with Brian at the time. And she's not holding back, folks. She's throwing accusations left and right, saying that Marcus is just jealous of Brian. What is the code of honor? Well, basically, basically what he's saying is, we, if that ain't your girlfriend, then it's, right. it's open play. She's okay, open. I she's get it. All right, so day. I understand between the two of you, if it's not your girlfriend, then it's fair game. Either one of you can sleep with them or have sex or whatever yeah. you all want to do. Moving bang. forward. The courtroom is heating up as the judge reveals the results of the paternity test. And it's not looking good for these twins. The test shows that one of them is the father. But without further investigation, it's impossible to determine which one. You said that you really don't remember exactly everything that went down that night. And you possibly could have had sex. There were other nights that we did do the same uh, things, you know. And I could have possibly slept with them because they do look alike. They do look alike <laughs> and I was drunk, so, you know. But as we all know, this court does not mess around. They've ordered a full investigation, including a polygraph test, to get to the bottom of this tangled web of deceit. Cecily has been flip-flopping left and right, denying everything one minute, and then admitting she might have slept with one of the twins the next. Either way, we're about to find out the truth. To three-year-old Zaylin, it has been determined I was always second to him. Now you got an attitude because you feel second. You signed on for second. Possibly slept with them because they do look alike. And I was drunk, so. <laughs> That's not what ladies do. That's not. That's not what women do. That's what stupid girls do. Now let's fast forward to the moment of truth. The results are in, and everyone in the courtroom is dying to get to the bottom of this mess. Will Brian or Marcus be revealed as the father? Let's find out. This court has determined that Mr. Brian Wiggins is the, the biological father. father. Now you seem emotional. I have built, you know, over the year, past year or two, I have built a relationship with him. I felt it couldn't go as close as me and my daughter the whole time because I just really didn't know. I just didn't know. So this couple, Mr. and Mrs. Hendricks, has already appeared on couples court because of suspected infidelity. But now they're on paternity court and things are about to get even more complicated. Strap in, folks. This is going to be a roller coaster. And the baby in the womb. Is he mine? Is he not mine? I don't have the connect. This one here just completes my solar system, you know what I mean? So you want this to be your child? I want him to be mine, so we could be happy again. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. This is the case of Hendricks versus Hendricks. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. 
plot twist. Mrs. Hendricks is pregnant. And guess what? Mr. Hendricks is denying that he's the father. He says he doesn't see any resemblance and doesn't feel that fatherly bond. But Mrs. Hendricks is standing her ground, insisting that she's been faithful and that Mr. Hendricks is the father. Let the battle begin. Where? What's her state? There's the girls and then the baby. I mean... You're expecting? Yeah, I'm... Oh, my. Months. Mr. Hendricks was asked, had he had sex with his ex? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. So apparently Mrs. Hendricks has been partying, not coming home, and living like there's no tomorrow. But she claims it was all because of the rocky relationship and her cancer diagnosis. Talk about a double whammy. Will this add fuel to Mr. Hendricks' doubts? So I've done everything he wanted me to do. <gasps> Named him after him, circumcised him, did everything. Mr. Hendricks, she says she did everything you wanted her to do, even named the child after you. You don't believe the child is yours? I just, I don't feel that bond like I do with my other children. I mean, it... it I even he, named he, him after your dad, I mean. He barely looks like me. Mr. Hendricks drops a bombshell. He allegedly overheard a conversation between Mrs. Hendricks and a family member where they were talking about her hooking up with someone else. And apparently, Mrs. Hendricks doesn't even remember what happened that night. This is getting messier by the minute. Family member's house. You knew where I was. I, I mean, I'm a very predictable person. You would come home long enough to change your clothes, take a shower, leave again. Mm. Okay. You and were you know exactly where I and was And it was because... so uncomfortable with our past and with our life that I didn't even stay in the house. I took our car and I wound up driving around town, wasting gas, falling asleep sleep in it on dirt roads. Mrs. Hendricks comes clean and admits that she kissed another guy while partying, but she claims she immediately called Mr. Hendricks to come and get her. Hmm, that's a tough pill to swallow. Can a simple kiss lead to a baby? We're about to find out. The family member that I was around, you know that. But at the same time, she keeps telling but everybody she was too drunk that she don't remember if anything happened or I not. I did say that. Miss Hendricks, what is your side of the story? If you're saying you didn't sleep with this man, it's kind of hard for Mr. Hendricks to believe when your family members are saying you did. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hendricks is not backing down. He's still not seeing any resemblance between himself and the baby. He even went as far as getting a 4D ultrasound to look for similarities. But Mrs. Hendricks insists that the baby looks just like him. Find out you're pregnant. Yes. Do you tell Mr. Hendricks immediately I'm pregnant? I was at the do I had actually went into the emergency room because I had an internal hernia. Well, ordered a pregnancy test, all this, you know, because if I had had to go in for surgery. Hold up. We've got a medical twist in this tale. The baby has a blood disorder that Mr. Hendricks claims no one in his family has ever had. He's starting to wonder if this is another clue that he's not the father. Can this blood disorder provide some answers? We're about to find out. She winds up pregnant just out of the blue after our little issues and after she goes and starts visiting and, and hanging out. She winds up pregnant. I don't find that fair whenever he's bringing up the treatments I went through because I was 170 pounds more and the doctor even told you if I'd lose weight, it'd be a lot easier for me to get pregnant. But you didn't for four years. We've got Dr. Gator in the house, and she's here to shed some light on this blood disorder situation. Apparently, it's called ABO incompatibility, where the mother's immune system attacks the baby's blood cells. Who knew blood could cause so much drama? Let's see if this condition can give us any clues about paternity. No, no, and that's why we're here, because that that this is what we try to make people understand, is that relationships that go off the rails often produce situations like this, paternity situations, where, I mean, literally, this baby trying to grow and mature and get ready to make its debut into this world. All right, folks, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Judge Lake has the paternity results in her hands. Will Mr. Hendricks be proven right? Or will Mrs. Hendricks get the vindication she's been waiting? Get ready, because we're about to get the truth. Mr. Hendricks, you are the father. <laughs> Told you you had no reason. I mean, you, you didn't need to doubt me. Miss Hendricks, he did. And there was reason It was there. Doubt. I'm sorry. We, we, we got was, the answer there. we wanted, but he did have reason to doubt. That's what you have to understand. There was enough anger to go around in this court case. Ms. Colbert appeared in court, boiling like a volcano, to prove to Mr. Tubbins that he was the only man who could have fathered her twins. But Mr. Tubbins claimed there was no way he could be the father because he found out that she had slept with two of his family members. Ms. Colbert, you've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to Mr. Tubbins that he is the father of your nine-month-old twins, Ariel and Adonis Colbert. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Tubbins, you say you know you're not the twins' father and claim that you uncovered that Ms. Colbert slept with not one, but two of your family members. Yes, sir. Everyone wanted to know what kind of relationship Mr. Tubbins and Ms. Colbert had that would make her want to sleep with his family members. Well, guess what? They were actually married. They got married about a 
month after they met each other, and she claimed it was because of Mr. Tubbin's religion. I married him one month after dating, and it was because of his religion issues. He wanted to become married, and because he wanted to use me. He was living in a house with a two-year-old child with no hot water That's and no lot. electricity, and I felt bad for him, and I allowed him to come to my house and say, yeah. next thing you know, he impregnates me. In no time, accusations started to fly about, and the secrets of their relationship started to come to light. After their marriage, less than three weeks into the marriage, Mrs. Colbert hops out of nowhere and tells Mr. Tubbins she's pregnant, and in his mind, it just doesn't make sense. About three weeks after you married her, she told you she was pregnant. Yes. And immediately, you questioned the twins. Yes, because she lied from the beginning. She, she told me that the last person that she slept with was three months prior before we started trying to get together. If there's anything Ms. Colbert was sure of, it was the fact that she had the worst taste in men and getting intimate with Mr. Tubbins was the worst mistake of her life. She claimed he was using her because she loved him and wanted to get him out of a messy position in his life. He just Honor, used me. Sure. He was using my truck. He ain't have no way to get around and I was helping him. And out. that's who that's you chose right. to that's sleep with? <laughs> it was the worst mistake of my life. Exactly. It was the worst mistake <laughs> exactly. of my life. So you let him move in, then you married him. Yes, I did. Okay. And that was the worst mistake that I ever made in my life. Mr. Tubbins was still hitting the nail on the head by claiming that Ms. Colbert had slept with his family members. As you would expect, the judge was forced to ask him how he knew something like that happened. His response was nothing short of mind-blowing. He claimed she told him about it. Yes, I did. Order. It was 20 he... years before me and him got together. Hold when on. me and him first started ch dating, I looked on his Facebook and, you know, I was just being known because we starting to date, I want to investigate you. Yeah. So I'm doing my investigation, and I see the picture of him and a mutual friend of ours. And come to find out, it's his family member. So I, me, if we're gonna continue on in a relationship, Your Honor. Newsflash, she didn't just sleep with one of his family members. At least, that's what he was claiming in the courtroom. He said that when they broke up, the other family member came to him and told him that if he had mentioned he wanted to get married to her, he would have advised him against it because he also slept with her. Did this family member say he had also slept with her? Yes. So there's one family member from 20 years ago and then this family member. Yes. Did she ever tell you about the second family member? Never. Miss Colbert, did you sleep with the second family member? I wouldn't even know what he talking about. Then, not only that, it was beyond a mess in the courtroom, with Miss Colbert and Mr. Tubbins yelling at the top of their voices. Now, Miss Colbert was voicing out her complaints to the judge and telling her that all the while, they were together. Mr. Tubbins never told his family members about her or her babies. Trust me, she was furious about it. He hid my it's... pregnancy. He didn't want nobody to know that we That's was even getting lie. married. Never hit Why don't you be honest? You call Never yourself a man of God. Be a man of God and be honest, okay? Don't sit up here and try to paint me out like I'm no tramp when I was nice enough to let you in my home when you ain't have you nothing. Asked me to, no you asked heat. me to come. You, you asked me. I have more ask you. Even the judge was about to lose her temper with Mr. Tubbins. He had no evidence to show that the twins were not his children. All his doubts rested on the fact that he felt Ms. Colbert slept with his family members. To make things even worse, he had never seen the twins since they were born. There'd be one in August, he ain't met him, he ain't look at him, he ain't buy him a wait, 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 hold on, hold on. They're about to be one year old. Yes. And August. he has never, never looked seen at them. them. I take care of my kids. I have four kids that I take care of. He wasn't making any sense to the judge anymore, so he decided to raise the argument about how the conception dates for the twins didn't add up to him. But Ms. Colbert was beyond ready for that fight. Trust me. The doctor said that she conceived on November 20th. We didn't have sex until November 30th. No, we didn't. Your Honor, we had sex a couple days before the 28th, and then we had sex for the second time on the 28th. So we had two, Honor, we had sex two times right. in a week. The the moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty. What would the outcome be? Is he the father, or has Ms. Colbert been lying all this time? Time to see what the future holds for them. Mr. Tubbins, you are the twins' father. I'm sorry, I'll take care of him, but I, I have reason whatever. for doubt. I have reason for doubt. Oh, I'll really? take care of him. Okay, I have whatever. For doubt. Whatever. Before you start acting silly in here off of emotion, you haven't even met your twins. You have two beautiful babies. Ms. Luce was not here to joke. She was suing the defendant for a certain amount she used in taking care of her child. She also claimed there was no need for a DNA test because she was beyond positive that the child belonged to Mr. Zuniga. Mr. Zuniga, on the other hand, believed he was not the father and knew who the actual father was. Ms. Luce, 
you are suing the defendant for $2,716.86 of back child care expenses for your son, Marley. Yes, Your Honor. You say there's no need for a paternity test because you're certain he is your baby's father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Zuniga, you say you don't owe her a dime because you're not her son's father. You've petitioned the court for a lie detector test. Now, Ms. Luce took to the floor and talked about how Mr. Zuniga abandoned her and her child for no reason. She claimed after the first four months of having her baby, he was beyond excited and didn't want anything more than to be the father of the child. But all that changed. For the first four months of my son's life, he was there. He stepped up. He was a man. He wanted to be his father. He was excited about everything. And then all fell through. He abandoned us. I had to take care of my son alone on my own. I had to pay for every little bit of the expenses, all the diapers, all the wipes, every single piece of clothing he needed. I have the receipts here. Mr. Zuniga was trying to counter Ms. Luce's accusations, which stated that he had not done anything for either her or her child. He claimed she was lying and that most of the money he spent on her and her child but Ms. Luce came prepared with receipts showing she had been taking care of her baby by herself. He might have put money into the little things he needed then, but he didn't do anything else after that. And you've <laughs> presented to the court evidence of expenses you've had yes, to incur. by myself. Including diapers, Similac, baby food, feeding yes. set, bibs, onesies, all things a baby needs. He was trying all he could to paint Ms. Luce as an unfaithful woman who liked the jump from one man to the next. But trust me, that did not last long. Ms. Luce admitted she did sleep with other men, but that was after their relationship had ended. Well, I found out that she never really stayed in relationships long. She liked to jump from guy to guy. Ms. Luce, were you sleeping with other men when you were sleeping with Mr. Zuniga? No, not one. I did sleep with a few men after him, but I was only sleeping with him when we were together. Okay, but that's, Mr. That's Zuniga, do you have any other man. children? No, ma'am. I've always thought I was sterile. Here's where things escalate to the next level. Mr. Zuniga gave an instance where a random woman walked up to him and told him that Ms. Luce had been sleeping with her husband whenever Mr. Zuniga was away for work. Trust me, the courtroom was shocked to hear that revelation. She was cheating on me the whole time with her husband, and he looks <laughs> Just like the father, red hair and blue eyes. Okay, so the gentleman he's talking about, Ms. Luce, have you had a relationship with this man? I did have sex with him. There was the relationship, but that was after we split. Well, the big question on Judge Lauren's mind was how long they had been together. I mean, if you ask me, they should have been together for quite some time to have this kind of mess. That was not the case. They had been in a relationship for only two weeks. Did you say two and a half weeks? Yes, Your Honor. As far as I know, she could have been pregnant before I even got with her. Why are you young people running around having unprotected sex with people you knew for two weeks? The most shocking thing then went on to happen in the courtroom. Ms. Luce had a witness who was going to back her claim that Mr. Zuniga was the father. The witness was none other than Mr. Zuniga's mom. I'm pretty sure you didn't see that coming, did you? Well, she sure wasn't here to take her son's side. I love my son, don't get me wrong. I really honestly love my son. And I would be on my son's side, but his reasonings are crazy to me. What makes you have a baby? Sex. What did they do? have unprotected sex. I um, submitted pictures earlier to the courts of how much they look alike. It was no longer a battle between Ms. Luce and Mr. Zuniga. Ms. Luce had Mr. Zuniga's mother backing her up so good, you could that you would honestly think his mother was actually Ms. Luce's mother. I drove there because I didn't believe the kid was gonna come Oh, no, 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 Your Honor, can I stop When I minute? drove there, I wanted to validate that he, oh, he would no, my no, kid. No. I got there, he looked nothing like me. He no. looked a lot like that so kid. So when you heard the baby was coming, you drove three and a half hours. You said, I wanna go see this baby. No, Your Honor. Yes. Did you sign the birth certificate? I did at first, and then she lost the paperwork. Judge Lauren had seen enough of the drama in Mr. Zuniga and Ms. Luce's situation. It's finally time to reveal the truth and clear the doubts that were flying around in the courtroom. Who do you believe the father of the child is? Mr. Zuniga, you are his father. Oh, thank oh you, God. Jesus. <laughs> you you tell him you're sorry. Your son. <laughs> well, look at him. <laughs> you tell him you're sorry. Look at him. Yes, look at him. So, Maybe that's yours. But you lied. Okay, but look at you. Yes, I made it. All right, we're getting over there. there. We're Whatever over Ted that. says it, he is your son! <laughs> Mr. Hudson was beyond furious with Ms. Bridges. Why? She led him to believe that he was the biological father of her son, then went on to break his heart by telling him she slept with another man. Ms. Bridges didn't deny the fact that she was intimate with another man, but she had every reason to believe that Mr. Hudson was her child's father. Mr. Hudson, you claim the defendant led you to believe you were her son, Ja'Cory's biological father.
biological father, then dropped a bomb and admitted she slept with someone else. Yes, Yon. You're in court to prove you are not her son's father. Yes, Yon. Ms. Bridges, you admit to sleeping with another man, but claim that you have no doubt Mr. Hudson is your child's biological father. Now, Ms. Bridges and Mr. Hudson had been together for five solid years. Around this period was when Ms. Bridges got pregnant, and Mr. Hudson automatically believed he was the father, because at the time, she was the only one she was sleeping with, or so he was led to believe. So you were there throughout the pregnancy, yes, and you were taking care of her. You all lived together. Yes, ma'am. You had a relationship. Yes, Yana. So you thought this baby was yours. Yes, Yana. Were you at the birth? Yes, Yana. I was, I was at the hospital. I took her to doctor's appointments. I was there. I cut the umbilical cord, Yana. I even signed a birth certificate on the day of the birth. And the truth bomb couldn't have picked a better time to be dropped, trust me. At one of their son's birthday parties, Mr. Hudson and Ms. Bridges got into a heated argument, and that's when the truth jumped out of Ms. Bridges' mouth that she slept with another man. And so, Mr. Hudson, you say this bomb she dropped. When, when did she drop this bomb? We had an argument. And that's when she came and she was telling me how I might not be the father and she had done these things. But I paid no attention to them because I am the father. I'm supposed to be the father. I'm here. Since Mr. Hudson found out that his girlfriend cheated on him, he hasn't been in the child's life at all. It's not like he didn't want to be in his son's life, but he claimed he had no way of contacting his child because Ms. Bridges wouldn't let him see the baby. I have no way of getting in contact with him. I can't talk to him. I can't he, see him. He knows my auntie number. I gave it to him plenty of times. You're just making things up just not to be in the baby's life. So is it your inability to get in contact with the child really what's holding you back, or is it the fact that you don't truly know. I mean, Ms. Bridges admitted to cheating, so there was a high chance that there were possibly two different men who could be the fathers of the child. The big question now is, what's making her so certain that the child belongs to Mr. Hudson and not the guy she slept with? I've been there, correct. I took care of her when the time when she had no one else to take care of her. Yes, and I appreciate that. I took that the part. For everything. I did everything. I didn't, she didn't have to do nothing but go to school. I paid all the bills. I worked two jobs yes. at the age of 18. He feels like you led him to believe he was the father. Mr. Davis, the man she had a sexual relationship with outside of her initial relationship with Mr. Hudson, walks into the courtroom and his mouth is filled with so many truth bombs, believe me. The crazy thing was that Mr. Davis also thought he was the father of her child. Me and Miss Bridges met, you know, we hung out for a couple of months. We ended up having unprotected sex around about three times. I didn't know that she was pregnant at all until I looked on Facebook one day, like a year later, and um, I see a picture of her son. And immediately I think her son looks like my nephew. About a year after that, she came to me. Uh, she's like, oh, well, can you tell me the days that... Now, Ms. Bridges couldn't get her story right with the judge, and it was really starting to piss her off. First, she claimed she knew for a fact that Mr. Hudson was the child, but she left out the part where she also made it known to Mr. Davis that he could also be a potential father. But, I mean, but you, you know told... Short, and what was the point of coming to me and saying anything at all? Because, like, I was just adding up the date to see um, how... I was just adding up the dates. He said it was okay, wrong. Okay, but then so you came right back to me. I came to you. You came right back to me, and when I asked you why you asked a second time, you're like, hold your breath now, because the DNA test results are ready to be revealed. The tension was escalating, with emotions running high, and the truth was about to hit like a plot twist. Who's the real baby daddy? Let's see. Mr. Hudson, you are not his father. Mr. Davis, you are not his father. <laughs> <laughs> this courtroom is in shock. This is not what anyone expected today. Mr. Page was beyond upset in the courtroom. Trust me, he was willing to bring down the roof on everyone if he was given the chance. His ex fiance cheated on him, moved his son to another state, and decided to marry the man she cheated on him with. To make things worse, she didn't deny it. Mr. Page, you claim your ex fiance and the mother of your three year old son cheated on you and then took your son to another state to marry the man she cheated with. Now you say Miss Sutton also has a two year old daughter whom she claims is yours, even though her husband has been raising her as his own. Now, Mr. Page was asked to talk about why he and his ex fiancee split in the first place. The sentence that dropped from his mouth would make you understand the intensity of his frustration. My ex fiancee, Alicia, cheated on me I sure and did. moved to another state with my son. Mm -hmm. And then. So, wait, back here. Yes. Back, back, back Can I up start? for a second, Mr. Page. Can I start? You're together. We was together, Your Honor. You're engaged. Yes. yes. And then you found out she was cheating. Yes. Tell she me started about like this. this. <sighs> she said she, on uh, her girlfriend. To make things worse, Ms. Sutton, 
who happened to be the ex-fiance in the picture, wasn't denying any of the claims. The big question is how they both got themselves into such a messy situation. Ms. Sutton had her own side of the story to tell, and it sure seemed like Mr. Page was no saint either. Let me hear from you from the okay, beginning, Ms. Sutton. First of all, we have a three-year-old son, and yes, he was there at the birth of my son. But the reason why I cheated, because you was never home. You want to do what you want to do, smoking, drinking. If I'm hearing you out doing all these things, why I can't go do? Miss Sutton claimed that she was getting information from people that suggested that Mr. Page was doing some funny business with women while he claimed to be out working. What was even more mind-blowing about where she got the information was that she got the news from Mr. Page's friends. He's in other girls' face and all that stuff. Are I said, serious? okay, you can be in other females' face, but what is he doing with these females? Oh, you don't even want me to tell you. That's, That's how they go. You, you don't even want me to I tell you. Do? If your homeboy is saying you don't even want me to tell, that means you was you sleeping with her. You sitting up here don't. acting like I was sending you confronting him about this? These two couldn't stand each other one bit. In his defense, Mr. Page claimed that he was an unhappy person in their relationship and that when he was sad, he would go out to drink his sorrows away. But Ms. Sutton was hell-bent on believing that any time he went out, he always went to sleep with someone else. So now I just... Okay, so that gives I'm you a reason to person. cheat. If you no, I went out and drank late okay. night. I went okay. out and drank with so my son. So you were son. out hanging out yes, you and are. you were drinking, but you weren't cheating. With, yes, now, never cheated. Miss Sutton, when you heard was that he was out sleeping around. I didn't believe it at first because I want to find out on my own. I'm not just so what believe did you no do? females. Here's where things start to get intense. Mr. Page was already having his suspicions that Miss Sutton had been messing around with someone new. He wasn't sure who it was, so he decided to find out. His detective instincts were pretty good because he found the man who she had been sleeping with. My fiance Alicia Sutton, he started saying right there, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That should never happen. I said, did you sleep with Alicia? He said, yes, I did. Okay. At that time, Time, my one tear drop in my eyes. Just one. One tear, oh just drop. I promise you. A tear drop in my eyes, my like heart this. felt like it was upon my hand. This case was taking a spin for the worst. All you could feel for Mr. Page was sadness because Ms. Sutton really did him dirty. Moving on, Mr. Cooper wasn't just her new man. Oh, trust me, he was way more than that. They were married, and to make things worse, he was claiming he was the father of her baby. The last two years, I've taken care of this baby. I've done everything I could. She's mine. I feel it in my heart that she's mine. You know, despite what happened between Alicia and I and her ex-fiance, I accept that. I'm sorry for that. But when Alicia told me she was pregnant, you know, I was excited, you know. No, you was not excited. Yes, he was excited. When, yes, I, told he was when excited. I told you, you told me that this child is not chill. The stakes were high for both Mr. Page and Ms. Sutton. On one side, Mr. Page was desperately hoping the baby was going to be his. On the other hand, Ms. Sutton was hoping the baby belonged to her husband so she could save her marriage. Well, let's see who goes home with butterflies in their stomach. Mr. Page. Page, you are her father. No emotion. What are you feeling? I always want to pressure your daughter. That's my do first daughter in the family. And I'm going to love her and raise her. Mr. Cooper, I see you feeling very emotional. I know this wasn't the news you wanted. She's still mine. Over my dead body. That's my daughter. Let's just say a lot was hanging on the results from the DNA test in this episode. Mr. Hodges was in court with his mother to prove that he couldn't be the father of Ms. Willard's one-month-old baby, and he had his proof to back him up. Ms. Willard was also in the courtroom with her own mother, and they wanted to prove that they were a thousand percent sure the baby belonged to Mr. Hodges. Mr. Hodges, you and your mom opened your case today because you both say the defendant is a liar and a cheater. You don't believe you fathered her one month old daughter, Lillian Willard, and plan to prove that today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Willard, you too are here with your mother, and the two of you testify. Mr. Hodges wasn't just upset that there was a possibility the baby could not be his. He was quite upset that the woman he believed to be the love of his life was a pathological liar, and she would cheat on him with several guys on different occasions. But as you would expect, Ms. Willard denied his accusation and claimed he was wrongly accusing her. He cheated on me, and I caught her with multiple guys. She had one hidden in the room, and whenever we first got together, she said that she would never hurt me or cheat on me. She would be truthful, and yet she's lied to me left and right. Ms. Willard, you kept lying and you kept cheating? Um, no, I did not. Had a guy over at my house, yes. He was visiting because he was a childhood friend. Now Mr. Hodges was asked what kind of relationship he had with Ms. Willard and how they ended up becoming a couple. His answer was nothing short of shocking. He claimed he met her after she had a one-night stand with one of Mr. Hodges' family relatives. He was trying to comfort her after she had an emotional one-night stand with the guy she claimed was a family relative. I met him through a family member of his. She had one night stand with him and I was there to comfort her and we talked for a week or so. And 
Oh, you met her after she had a one night stand with another guy, and then she cried on your shoulder. And then you and she got together. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Blevins, I understand that you are the one who pushed your son to open this case. Mr. Hodges was initially hesitant to drag Ms. Willard's ass to court to determine if he was the real father of her child. They weren't just throwing accusations, trust me. They had caught her in the act more than once. To make things even worse, Mr. Hodges and Ms. Willard were engaged, but before that, she had already been married and Mr. Hodges had no idea. They had broke up. So why you have to hide anybody? Because she right. didn't want him to know. She didn't want to hurt him. She didn't want to start no trouble because Hardy's got a temper. <laughs> well, we was engaged. It was my understanding they had broke up. So were you engaged or were you broken up? We was engaged. We we were engaged. Mm. So you were engaged, Miss Willard? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So now that makes more sense when your fiance came in the house, then you hid this other guy in the- Because I didn't want to fight to start. And your honor, she was what? already married. Well, it was time to throw in the evidence and Mr. Hodge's mom came well prepared. Mr. Hodge's mom had some mind blowing texts that revealed Ms. Willard's atrocities. It was no joke in the courtroom, trust me. All hands were pointing to Ms. Willard because it was obvious she was married while in a committed relationship with Mr. Hodge's when Lillian was born at the hospital. Do you have those messages? Uh, yes, ma'am. Let me have those. Jerome, can you please bring me those messages? Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Blevin says, I do understand my son was engaged to her and caught her cheating. The other man says, we got together on June 2nd of last year. Ms. Blevins, you say, let me check the dates. Give me a minute. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Blevins, you say together, August split up a few times. If there was one thing Ms. Willard was very good at, it was the fact that she sure knew how to hide things from Mr. Hodges. First, she didn't disclose the fact that she was married before they started dieting. Secondly, she refused to tell him that she was cheating on him with another guy, and now she had a child before her current baby, and she still didn't mention it to Mr. Hages. So she hid that she had a husband before she met you, and you were engaged to her when she really already had a husband. She hid that she had had a child and she also hid a man in her mother's house when you came over. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Hodges, take me to the day you found out Miss Willard was pregnant. She called me and she said that she was eight months pregnant. Everyone in the courtroom could see why Mr. Hodges said he was very hurt when the court session initially started. Ms. Willard was actually a pathological liar and the lies had gone on for just too long. Judge Lauren was no longer going easy on her. It was high time she started telling the truth and stopped playing with everyone's emotions. Emotions. This is too much lying. I know. <laughs> this is this is just too much lying. Now I heard about five lies already. What is going on? Why are you texting him like he, the baby isn't born when the baby is born? Okay, he's married now, and I just didn't want to break up a marriage when he found out he had a kid by another person. Um, that's that's it. She but you told him. Well, there's no going back now. The situation is just very messed up, but the truth is about to be unleashed. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. All that was left was for the DNA results to be revealed and for this drama to come to an end. The answers lie in front of the judge. Mr. Hodges, you are the father. We have the answer we needed. And it was actually the answer all of you wanted. I want to meet with you both in my chambers. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Honor. Court is adjourned. Mr. Cooper wasn't denying the fact that he had a relationship with Ms. Canterbury, but the issue here was that he wasn't going to accept the baby because he said he knew for a fact that he couldn't be the father of the child. He also claimed that Ms. Canterbury threatened to make him pay for child support. Ms. Canterbury, on the other hand, was beyond certain that results would prove he is the father and he would have to step up. Mr. Cooper, you admit to a brief sexual fling with the defendant, but state there is no way you fathered her two-year-old son, Jay. You opened your case because you claim Miss Canterbury threatened to put you on child support and you want to prove you're not the father before she can do that. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Cooper was definitely one of those dramatic men you don't want to mess with. He claimed he had been watching paternity court for a while and he had seen how good men are played by wicked women who just don't care. He then went on to drop a truth bomb where he said Ms. Canterbury called the night before to ask if he was going to be upset if he found out the baby wasn't his. I watch people come in here all the time and some people be good men and get criticized and then they be sitting here, then all they want is just the money from him and it ain't gonna be me today. And you're convinced that Jaden's not your biological <clears throat> child. She know that baby ain't mine. That's like she just called me last night talking about some would you be mad if he wasn't yours. What? That's a lie though. That's a lie. I never said any of that. He 
might be denying the baby now, but that was not the man Miss Canterbury claimed he was while they were kicking it in bed. As she recalled on more than one occasion when they had sex, she claimed that Mr. Cooper told her that he wanted her to have his kids. He stopped her immediately. She said that and said she was lying. While we were having sex that he wanted me to have his baby. Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Your Honor, she's a lie. I never said that. But you did. He did. He said that. I ain't say that. What did you say? I see it. I'm enjoying this moment right now in so many words. <laughs> That's all I said, Your Honor. Ms. Lake, I didn't say nothing about no baby, have my baby, no none of yes, that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's a lie. That's a lie. He did. So wait, well, I were you just... got me confused with somebody else. Did you say it in the heat no. of the moment, mister? As they kept on arguing about who was lying and who wasn't lying, another truth slipped out of Mr. Cooper's mouth. Now, when Ms. Canterbury found out she was pregnant, she never reached out to Mr. Cooper or even tried to tell him it could be his child. But the moment the child was born, Mr. Cooper got a call from his mom telling him that Miss Canterbury was in her house claiming that he was the father of her child. Monitor, you saw? That's one of the pictures. I liked it a couple of them. She didn't say nothing to me. But when did you hear that you could potentially be Jaden's biological father? When I found I out call, I was pregnant. I get a, hold on, I'm talking. I get a call. And you keep I'm talking. at the house. And you keep talking. I'm at the house. I get a call. My mama called me. Some girl here with a baby. And I'm still a baby. What you mean, baby? That's how I felt. I'm like, man, you got me messed up. I ain't got no kids. And that is the first time. Mr. Cooper was trying to reason with the judge. He was mad about the fact that Miss Canterbury never for once mentioned to him that he could be a possible father to her baby. She just walked to his mother's house and dropped off the baby. To him, it made no sense. And that was part of why he had doubts that the baby could be his. You know this baby was my baby, or you claim it to be my baby. If you had a baby and you thought a man was your potential baby father, once you let him know whether he is or he not, you would and say something and you would and let him know oh, it's a potential you could be. You would say that, right? Of course, but you I wouldn't not have, have a potential. nobody stuck in the dark, living a lie. You're not gonna do that. She admitted to it. Man, she admitted to being with other dudes. Now Mr. Cooper was trying to prove to the courtroom that the window of conception Ms. Canterbury was claiming to have occurred was somewhat incorrect. There was a time they had a threesome, and he remembered he was very drunk, but what thing he remembered perfectly was the fact that he used protection. Oh. Second time we had sex was this week, through the 28th. And I remember it, it was threesome. We was all drunk. You are, you are definitely a lie. How are you so sure you wore the condom? Judge, I woke up with it on. Oh! He literally I woke up with talking. it on. It was on me. And the second time we had sex <laughs> it was wasn't on me. until after Jaden was born. <laughs> okay. Well, the drama from the window of conception was finally put aside. Ms. Canterbury was very upset that Mr. Cooper had not done anything for both her and her child since she told him she was pregnant. Instead of him stepping up, her boyfriend had been the father figure in her baby's life. She even said he had been with her after her son turned one year of age. Not at all. Doing anything for Jaden? No, no, nothing. Who's been Jaden's father My figure? boyfriend, Casey. So your boyfriend has yes. had to step up and be a father figure to Jaden. Yes, he's. we've been together. We've been together since before. Before Jaden was one years old. So he's been here, he's taken care of him financially, he's been here, taught him things. He's been the only father figure in his life. They're very close. Now, Your Honor. It's high time we brought this paternity war zone to a close. It's been one tricky ride here, but all that suspense is about to be over. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Mr. Cooper, you are the father. Like I said, like I said. You are the father. Thank you, Your Honor, for those results. <laughs> I will leave you alone. I will no, do everything you, won't you want me to do. You got a, you got a uh, two-year-old, a three-year-old to take care of. Mr. Jones and Ms. Dowless have to be the funniest couple on the paternity court show. Their love story bounces from cheating to lying to deceiving. You just name it. From one charade to the next, these two find themselves in court, dragging each other for who is the better parent. Buckle up, people. You're about to be dumbfounded by this couple's drama. All right, Ms. Douglas, you are suing the father of your five children for a paternity test. You claim at times the defendant, Mr. Jones, doesn't treat your daughter, Cheyenne, as his own, and that he has always been suspicious that he's not her biological father. You admit that you kept a secret from him and you cheated on him with his cousin, but say when that secret finally came out, he immediately denied. Getting down into the bits of this drama right from the beginning of the case, Ms. Dowless admitted to cheating on Mr. Jones. She apparently slept with his cousin. Now, that's all shades of crazy, if you ask me. Here's the shocking thing. Mr. Jones was no saint either. He was also cheating on her with her own cousin and one of his baby mamas. I would have lost my mind if I were the judge, honestly. I do, because I did make a mistake. I slept with this cousin and the condom had broke, but before that, Tyrone was downstairs sleeping with my cousin. He was still having sex with his baby's mom. He was doing him basically, but 
Yeah, I did. That was a mouthful. Made a mistake and slept with his cousin. Yeah. But he was downstairs sleeping with your cousin? Yes. And 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 more. I don't I don't cheat. I don't believe in cheating. I'm very Just like in the movies, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Douglas met at a party. Things got pretty freaky and interesting after that, and they ended up getting pretty intimate. After her cozy night with Mr. Jones, she met his cousin and voila, she went down on him too. How does that even happen? I met Tyrone actually at a party that happened downstairs in my building. I met him and his cousin almost the same night. Me and Tyrone got together the first night we watched movies. The next night we did have sex, but we weren't together. We were just, we just had sex and after that he went back to his, to his other baby's mom. And then I met his cousin and I did, yes, I slept with his cousin, but we weren't together. So yeah, I slept with his cousin, but. And now things were starting to get heated up in the courtroom with both of them staring into each other's eyes like it was about to be a bloodbath. Boom, Ms. Dolis gets pregnant. Ring, ring, ring. She hits up and tells Mr. Jones that it's his baby. Things seem pretty nice right well let's burst some bubbles i wasn't too sure about it when she told me but i'm like okay when she did tell me i'm like okay i'll basically i'm gonna step up and do what i gotta do so you did try to support her through this yeah i actually did i'm looking at you miss douglas and you saying i didn't feel supported no not at all and i'm trying let's go back to the cousin part like when i did sleep with his cousin i was i was gonna deny the whole thing but he actually went in my room and actually smelled the bed and actually said it smelled like his cousin she finally decides to open up two damn years later telling Mr. Jones that she had a thing with his cousin. You could see the rage in his eyes, wondering where and how it all went down, just like that. Good baby daddy starts to play the role of, I'm not sure this is my kid. I did tell you things were going to escalate. Truth though, two years after my daughter was two, I ended up telling him the truth. So you go in and you smell, you know the cologne, your cousin, you say, okay, I know my cousin was here, but she denied everything, everything, everything. How long did it take you to tell the truth? Two years after my daughter was two years old. Okay, so you are in this, are you in a committed relationship? No. no. You just no. going along for the baby's sake. Slowly, all hell starts to break loose. Ms. Dolis spills the beans about Mr. Jones, telling the court how he wasn't there for her daughter and that he was taking care of his other kids with his baby mama. Yep, you had that right, other kids. It's already a whole mess at this point. He went to Chicago with his other's baby mama. We were together then, and I'm pregnant with his son. He went to Chicago, we didn't hear from him for about four months, didn't call check up on his daughter, didn't call check up on the pregnancy or nothing. How I knew he he was in Chicago with his baby mama. Well, she texted my phone like, oh, you're looking for your man? He's with me. You wonder why he's not calling your daughter? Because he's with me. That's how I knew he was in Chicago. Were you with another one of your children's mother when you... Emotions are flying here and there. Apparently, these couple have had other kids before their daughter, and they aren't even married. Are these two a baby factory, or what's going on with them? Well, five children potentially together. Was your relationship ever committed? Was it ever an important thing to either one of you? Are we just making babies? Is it a baby factory? What is it? After I had my daughter, it's like he he was basically playing me. We weren't together, so I'm like, okay, anything you can do, I can do better. So, but after, I mean, after I had my son. It's clear that these two had no trust for each other, even after having more than one child together. They can't seem to bring themselves to trust each other. Why would they? I mean, after getting intimate with each other's cousins, that's beyond a far stretch. That's child number two. You think he's cheating. Yeah. I just had my twins seven months ago. He's still, he's still talking to women. I don't never talk to any anybody first. After I find out he cheats on me, that's when I do it. But I really do want to be with him and I want to make a family for my five kids. Now, Ms. Douglas, you just keep saying, okay, now see, I do not believe in cheating. I do not believe in cheating. But when he does this, then I go do that. Everything went from a peaceful conversation to a bloodbath with the couples throwing tantrums about who got intimate with whom and who couldn't be a good parent. Well, the moment of truth is finally here. Every single eye is placed on the judge as she's about to reveal the final verdict. Hold your breath. Mr. Jones, you are not fine. Now I'm embarrassed, gotta face public humiliation because she didn't want to be honest before we came here. Yeah, and I didn't know. I didn't even know you the kind knew, of bust. Man. I didn't you even knew. know the kind of bust. How would I know if he's not the father when we're sleeping together every day? How would I know? <laughs> she told me, nah, I don't have no doubts. This time around, it was the man's turn to save the marriage. Mr. LeBlanc was on the verge of losing his wife and entire marriage if the results turned out to place him as the father of his mistress's child. Mrs. LeBlanc had it to her throat with her husband and was willing to throw it all away. Trust me, this case would leave you battling with goosebumps. I hope you guys are ready for the baby daddy saga that's about to unfold before your eyes. Ms. Waylon, you admit you've been in a sexual relationship with Mr. LeBlanc, a married man, and claim he is the father of your two-year-old son, Vincent Waylon. Mr. LeBlanc, 
You are determined to prove that you are not the father of Miss Whalen's son in hopes of saving your marriage. Mrs. LeBlanc, you are at your breaking point. And say, if the DNA proves your husband is the father. Ms. Whalen, who happened to be the runaway mistress in the picture, had quite a lot to say about Mr. LeBlanc's sneaky ways. Going down memory lane to how it all started, Ms. Whalen apparently didn't know he had a wife. While he was away, he was busy having a good time with Ms. Whalen. The bombshell drops and she finds out she's pregnant. Mr. LeBlanc enters full panic mode because he knows his wife can't find out. Let's try to figure out what is really going on. A baby. Now listen, Mr. LeBlanc, when she told you she was pregnant, what were you thinking? I was in disbelief. I didn't want to believe it. Were you worried about how you were going to be able to tell your wife? I was, yes, Your Honor. I was, I was worried. And that was the thing. That's why I didn't want her to be pregnant, because I didn't know how to... Unfortunately, you should have thought about that. Apparently, this wasn't Mr. LeBlanc's first rodeo of cheating on his wife. This time around, he had an affair and broke the news to his wife over a text. Yup, you heard that right. Looks like Mr. LeBlanc is definitely scared of his wife. What did the text say? The text message stated, um, I can't believe I did this to you again. Again, again. I can't believe I Wait. did this to you again. The word I'm hearing is again. Right, again, like over. So wait a minute, there was another time? Yes, ma'am, prior to Vincent, um, there was Jaden. <laughs> Who's the mother of that child? That's I my... am. That's my three-year-old. Ms. Whalen and Mrs. LeBlanc couldn't be in the same room. These women wanted to rip each other apart. Trust me, if that was a boxing ring, it would have had a Mike Tyson kind of boxing match. They kept throwing shades at each other. Even the judge had to call them to order. Well done, Mr. LeBlanc, well done. Shoot. That's my husband, that's called, that's called love. Feelings you can put love. in your pocket and throw away. That much love Feelings you can put in your pocket, you out, can throw them on the ground, step on them. Like love, I love LeBlanc. my mother. Yeah. Ladies, 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 calm down. Cause I know you all think it's cute cause you going back and forth, Thank but you. all y'all look crazy cause you sit up there arguing back and forth and he doing nothing but running back and forth. Like I said, Ms. Whalen and Mrs. LeBlanc weren't fans of each other. When Mrs. LeBlanc was asked why she felt the child could not belong to her husband, her answer was out of this world. She was so certain that the child couldn't be for her husband because Ms. Whalen was sleeping around with different men. The courtroom is a mess right now. No, Your Honor, I do not. Why? Her promiscuity. Promiscuous, very promiscuous. Like I see it. The mailman, the milkman. Um, not only that, you're sleeping with a married man. You know. Girl, so why, so, so hold on. So why not? You ain't why gotta not? sleep with a married why man not? if why, he come why, to you. Why, why not? Hold on. He you came said, to you because you were easy. It's hold on, easy. Miss LeBlanc. He couldn't do what he wanted to do. So you're saying if Vincent is your husband's biological child. Let me tell you something that would make your bubbles burst. Mr. LeBlanc and Mrs. Waylon already had a child before the particular kid in question. Meaning they had been fooling around for quite some time. Trust me, I can understand Mrs. LeBlanc's frustration. She just has had enough of her husband's mischievous ways. And you understand that, Mr. LeBlanc? Yes, sure, I do. Is that why you're not acknowledging and claiming the paternity of Vincent the way you did Jaden because you're afraid your wife is gonna leave? No, ma'am, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with my wife leaving. It, it comes about, okay, look at the name Vincent. Who is Vincent? Where'd she get the name Vincent from? <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna need you to use a little bit more logic in these. Another truth bomb hits the floors of the courtroom. Apparently, there might be two baby daddy in the mix. Ms. Whalen opened and said while Mr. LeBlanc ran back to his wife. She might have gotten intimate with another man. Well, I certainly don't blame her. She wasn't committed to him anyway. It might be. I might have had a moment. You okay. Never, you know, I mean, I wasn't committed to this man, nor was I married to this man. So yeah, I might have had a moment. Well, go it's ahead and tell not. the truth then, because that's why we're here. So now <laughs> we have the truth that there potentially could be another father. And so your doubts or your concerns have been validated. Ms. Wayland, did you ever tell anybody else that they're potentially the father? No, Yarna, I have not. Now that all made this last part all the more interesting, won't you guys agree? Well, the results were in and Judge Lale seemed about ready to deliver her final verdict on the mess these guys created. Let's find out who was the daddy. Mr. LeBlanc, you are the father. Ms. LeBlanc, I know that's not what you wanted to hear today. No. Oh, not at all. Not at all, Your Honor. Tell your husband. I've tried to just articulate it for you because I know even as you argue back and forth with them, that's just the way that you're trying to hold on to your strength.